I hate fractions. Yeah, they suck. They really, really do. I know, I get it. But the thing is, they have a purpose. So we just can't ignore them. We have to understand why they're so difficult, why we have a hard time, so therefore we can better understand them when we're doing our math. <sighs> Here we go. So one of the first reasons why I feel that students really struggle with math is fractions is a different number system than we are familiar with. We first learn about number systems like the counting numbers, you know, one, two, three, four. And this is very helpful, especially when we had things we wanted to count, like for instance, boxes. Like if I had one box, then I could say, well, now there's two boxes. And then I could say there's three boxes. So using the counter number system makes a lot of sense. But then we get into fractions and it's kind of like everything gets thrown out the window because when we're dealing with fractions, we're not dealing with the single number that we can just count, right? What we're dealing with is a comparison, a ratio. What we're doing is we're comparing the numerator over denominator. So this is a little bit different than our counting numbers because what we're doing is we actually have a number system that is a comparison. Even though it's a completely different number system than we're used to, we're not making it any easier on ourselves. To understand these numbers, based on the next reason why students struggle with fractions. Yeah, I'm already confused. I know, I know. I actually understand because a part of the reason why you're confused with fractions, besides it being a completely different number system than we are used to or what kind of seems natural to us, our language, the way that we describe fractions does not help us at all. So for instance, when we have a fraction, for instance, one third, a lot of times we'll say we have one third, but one third doesn't really accurately describe what exactly that fraction is. Now we could also say one out of three. With one out of three, you can actually envision what's going on. Just like when I say, when you have one box, you're like, okay, I got one box, right? And when you have two boxes, now I get it. You have three boxes. Okay, this is starting to make sense. So when I say one out of three, well then you could say there is one box, you know, out of the three. But one third doesn't actually describe that. And for a lot of students, that's where some confusion starts to begin. But then of course in education, it gets worse. Um, I'm kind of already confused. Yeah, I know. So when we're teaching fractions, automatically, because of it's a different number system, and we have a hard time really describing or explaining them, besides looking at, you know, a slice of pizza or a candy bar, our language doesn't always accurately describe what exactly is going on. So for instance, when we're describing operations or describing fractions, we'll use these types of words. Flip, reduce, improper, mixed. But the problem with these, and for many students that especially already start to struggle with fractions, is they don't accurately describe what exactly is going on. When I say flip a fraction, Fraction, what do you really mean? Do we just mean like flip it over? Do we mean flip it side to side? Of course, many people know exactly what I'm talking about, but if you're looking at this from somebody that is already struggling with math, flip does not accurately describe what we actually want them to do. We could use mathematical terms like reciprocate or multiplicative inverse, which again, I get it. I'm being more mathy. Yeah, I think I'm starting to see that. But the point that I'm trying to make is we can't just use this language loosely and expect every student to understand. We have to be very direct and detailed with what we expect our students to understand when we're using language to describe our fractions and what we want to do. When we say reduce the fractions, we're not meaning reduce the value of the fraction. For instance, six over 12 can be reduced to one half, but we're not reducing the fractional value. We're reducing the numerator and the denominator to lower terms that have the same equivalent value. When we use the word improper, what is really improper about that? To a lot of students that feels like the fraction is wrong or it should not be used. When in fact, improper fractions are preferred for many operations in in further mathematics. It doesn't follow a technical definition of being part of a number, but it's a very important distinction that students should understand of what exactly is an improper fraction, as well as a mixed number and understanding the components of the numeric value as well as the fractional component. And again, I don't have an overarching problem with exactly how the language is always used with them, because if you watch my videos of my instruction, you'll probably see that I've done the same thing when using my ways to explain fractions with my own students. But I think the important thing for those students that have struggle with fractions is to really look deeply into the language and to identify where you're getting confused and things are not making sense. Because a lot of times it can be those little nuances that can change everything for you. So really to understand fractions, we have to make sure that we are precise. We have to be careful with loosely using language that can confuse our own students. And a lot of times that is where the confusion starts to set in. But unfortunately, sometimes with fractions, it even gets worse once again. The last part why fractions are probably most difficult for most students once they've gotten over the understanding of fractions and the language is the operations. And it's because the difference with fractions and compared to counting numbers, as well as the language that we use, even makes the idea of the operations of the fractions 
even worse. When we look at operations with fractions, things change as we work with different fractions. So for instance, when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. When we divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. When we add or subtract fractions, we apply the operations to the numerator, but we keep the denominator the same. That's only when they have a common denominator. When they do not have a common denominator, we have to obtain a common denominator, then apply the operation in the numerator and denominator while keeping the new common denominator. And then again, we always want to look to reduce, reduce, and reduce to our lowest terms. If we don't understand fractions as a number system, if we get confused by the language that we use to either explain or have been taught fractions, are we all surprised that we get confused when we have problems with fractions? Nope, kind of makes perfect sense now. Hopefully this video has at least opened up your eyes to that you're not alone with struggling with fractions. And also it is not your fault. All hope is not lost in your mathematical journey. Make sure you are precise with your language. I keep practicing with your operations because that's going to allow you to obtain a better understanding of fractions when they come up in certain mathematical problems. I have a ton of other math videos with dealing with fractional operations that you can go ahead and check out right now. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.